Alright, in this video, this is part two, I guess you could say, to animating along a path or following a path. And in this tutorial, we're going to cover this red spot right here. In an earlier video, I did cover where the square was following this path we have here. And now we're going to add a little bit more to that with this other red path. You can find this preset in my free wallpapers folder and I'm just resuming the preset I did about a week ago where we have a square following a path. We're going to take some other rectangles, put them above and below, and then we're going to do a circle slice around here. And for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and disable that animation. And let's come back directly into root and let's add two rectangles. The rectangles are essentially going to be lines that come out to here. So let's go ahead and do that now. And for this rectangle, I'm going to make the height very similar to the height of the original rectangle that we did back in part one, this rectangle right here. It had a height of 10, I believe. And let's go ahead and make the width, I don't know, maybe somewhere around 300. Let's position this in the center left. And I'm going to move that up using the Y offset. I tell you what, I don't want the width to be 300, maybe somewhere kind of around 240. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's back out of here. Let's take that rectangle. Let's copy and paste. Let's take this new rectangle and let's position it in the positive Y, which is essentially going to move it down here. And I'm using the same number that I had up here. It was negative 80. Now I have positive 80. Now this next part is going to take a little bit of finesse. And what we want to do is create a circle slice that comes around like this. And we're going to have to be careful with the angle because we want it to start here, come all the way around, and then end right here. But we want it to look like one uniform shape where it appears to be connecting to this rectangle here and this rectangle here. So let's go ahead and add that circle slice. For the height, I want the height to be 10, but we want this width to be a lot bigger. So let's go ahead and start widening this up. And I'm going to go ahead and position this dead in the center of the screen. Now I'm sure we could do a little bit of math here to figure out exactly what this angle needs to be all the way around, but we're just going to eyeball this. So still inside of that circle slice, I'm going to take the angle and increase this. I'm going to come maybe somewhere right around here. We'll see. And basically what we want to do now with this angle, this little gap we have here, we're going to let this end touch up with one of these rectangles and then the other end of that circle slice is going to touch up with the other rectangle to make it appear to be connected. And to do that, we're going to go to the rotation for this circle slice. I'm going to set that to manual and we want to adjust that offset. Now what we're also going to have to do here is come back up and adjust our width. Again, just a little bit of fine tuning here. Maybe take the position, and I know it's dead center, but if we move it to the right a little bit, we can zoom on in. And depending on how centered you want everything to be, you can adjust both the width, the angle, and the offset. So I'm just going to come here and play around with these numbers, and I want to connect the circle slice with the rectangle on both ends. And saving that and applying it to the home screen, basically I'm looking to see how that corner looks right there where the rectangle and the circle slice touch. Now if you are following along with this tutorial, the position I have the X offset set to 40 with the circle slice in the center of the screen. And for that circle slice, I ended up using a width of 375, kept the height at 10 to maintain that same thickness the angle of the circle slice is set to 309 and its offset is 296. Again, a little bit of fine tuning there. So once you have that set up the way you want it, we're going to come back into root. And I tell you what, before I proceed, I'm just going to come in here and rename everything because, you know, we have squares, rectangles all over the place and it can be real easy to get confused. So there we go, the path for the square that was from part one that has this rectangle here and that circle. The animated square, of course, I did disable that animation at the beginning of the tutorial. Top part, that's this top rectangle. Bottom part, that's the bottom rectangle. And then we have this circle slice. And you know, as we continue this series, we're going to be adding even more shapes. So naming these things so we don't lose track of where we are, that can be very beneficial. And now we're still inside of root, so let's go ahead and add a rectangle. I'm going to cut my zoom off for a minute. 
And I want to position this rectangle in the center left. And I'll tell you what, actually what I want to do is I want to use a square. That way I only have to adjust one number. And what I want to do here is I want to make sure this square is big enough so that it covers this circle slice. 400 is probably just fine. And what we want to do is we want to color this square. And before I proceed forward to make this match up nicely, I'm going to go to my background here. I'm going to set my background to a solid black. I'm going to come back to the square. I'm going to set its paint to a solid black. And then I'm going to come over to FX. For texture, we're going to use a horizontal gradient. And let's set this to a red or whatever color you want. So now we have this horizontal gradient that's red here, and then what it's going to appear to do is as this thing moves along, it's going to become black, which blends in with the background. Now hang tight towards the end, and I'll show you another way that you can use a picture in the background and still maintain this nice transition. Now here's what we want to do. We want to come back to this square. I'm going to name it, and we'll call it gradient one. And let's take that square and let's position it, bearing in mind the size of our square, it was 400. I'm going to position this negative 400 so that it is off the screen. For animation, we're going to go ahead and add one. We're going to set it to loop. And this is the animation that we want to happen. But maybe we want this to go a little bit further and maybe you want to slow it down some. So I'm going to bump my duration up to 40, set the speed maybe to 200. And basically, I just want to make sure that this square, as it animates, it completely goes through and it goes completely off the screen, which is fine. I mean, you can fine tune the speed and duration to your liking. And now what we want to do with this one, this gradient one, notice I did call it gradient one. I'm going to slide it up in between the top part, which is that top rectangle, and then the bottom part. I'm going to go back to my top part, this rectangle that we have here. Go to FX, set the mask. Clip next module. And what this is doing is it's clipping that red square with that black gradient applied to it. Now let's back out of here. Let's take gradient one. We had the animations and everything set. Let's copy and paste it. I'm going to rename this gradient two. I'm going to slide gradient two in between the bottom part and the circle slice. So now what's going to happen is this bottom part, this bottom rectangle, if we go to FX, mask, Clip next module, it's going to clip gradient number two. And now you guessed it, let's copy and paste gradient two. And let's rename this gradient three. And this one is layered just fine. We want the circle slice. Notice the gradient three is beneath the circle slice here in our layers. Heading over to the FX for that circle slice and let's clip next module. Let's save this. And now we have that animated path, very similar to the one that I started off the video with. Now I would highly recommend using color globals and number globals, using the colors for these gradients, as well as that animated square that we covered back in part one. Let me go ahead and re-enable that. You know, if you have a color global, you can use that color global both for this square and this here. And then using those number globals, you can kind of have these going in unison. It's not really that bad the way it is actually. So notice here I got lucky with my duration. I didn't use any globals here, but the square starts and this little gradient piece gets applied at the same time that that square starts. Not too bad. Now, as we were creating those gradient squares, I did mention I was gonna show you a way that we can have this gradient effect applied with a background image. So I'm gonna head over to the background for my preset and I'm going to apply an image to it. So now I have this wallpaper applied to it and you can see that the black on that gradient doesn't look as nice now. Quick fix for that, let's head on into each gradient, gradient number one, for its paint, for that color black that doesn't look too nice right now, let's set that black to completely transparent. And now let's come back and apply this to both gradient two and gradient three. And now, you know, we don't have that black trail, it's just pretty much kind of fading out because we did set the black part of our gradient to a transparent color. I could see this where you have some type of wallpaper and you actually have these colors of the square and this gradient path we have animating here. I could see you using some of those BP function inside of custom. You know, you can take the actual background image, you know, the examples we have here over at help.custom.rocks. It uses the music cover, but if you have some global image, 
You can pull all sorts of various colors from it, the vibrance, the muted, the dominant, etc. And applying those BP functions to the square here or this animated gradient path, it can really, you know, add a little bit of pop to your custom live wallpaper. And there you have it, part two of animating paths inside of KOWP. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.